What's up guys, Joel Valley from Media Glitch here and today I am going to review this book, A Guide to Japanese Role Playing Games. And I have a lot of video game books in my collection, but this is by far the best book I have ever gotten. And I'm going to show you an unboxing to show you how awesome it's packaged. I'm also going to uh, have some special guests. This is going to be a different type of review. You're going to hear people from, like My Retro Life, Radical Reggie, The Cag Man, Chase After the Right Price. Isha Gaming, Console Wars, and John Riggs. They're going to talk about some of their favorite RPG games during this review, so you're not going to want, you're going to want to stay till the end, because it's going to be awesome. We're going to look at this book. If you're a real gamer, a true gamer, you need to get this thing, and I'm going to show you why. Before we get any further, let me know in the comment section below, what is your favorite RPG? Come on, tell me. I need to know. I will respond. So here we are. I'm kind of backtracking. I opened up the tab already, but it was so well packaged. I was like, I got to show you guys. See, this is the tab that was on the first part. You open up the cardboard and you're greeted with this beautiful foam. Like no corners are going to get crushed here. It's not going to be like an Amazon package where they just throw it in there with one little thing of bubble wrap. No, this has bubble wrap all over that. And after that wrap, there's more wrap. And then after that wrap, there's more wrap. So Trust me, you guys are going to get an awesome book. It's going to come to you. It's going to be looking good. Oh my gosh, look at this, guys. Look at that art. Very ease inspired. Kids playing in front of the TV. All about JRPGs. A guide to Japanese role playing games, guys. You're first greeted with the table of contents, your introduction. But before I get too much into it, look how beautiful this thing is. It is built to last. The pages are thick. Everything looks good. Look at the binding on this. 652 pages of Japanese RPGs. You have your contributors. You got what is an RPG, the history of RPGs in Japan, soundtracks. Man, they put everything in here. Anime, all these pictures make it come to life. It's so beautiful. Say something. Please don't die. Tell me you're all right. <sighs> the chains came loose. They got so many cool little sections in here for you guys to read. They even talk about remakes, about like Final Fantasy. Like, it's so crazy that this is where it was. And this is where it is today with our remake. Who goes there? You're up. You're coming with us. Nice and easy. Don't think so. Wow, how far we've come in such a short amount of time. This book also has like these cool uh, like overworld map drawings that someone did. Really well done. I love them. I'll put them up here. This, like everything that is in this book is so good. And one thing I want to mention is when you buy a copy of this book, they send you a PDF. So that's where I'm taking these stills from. You get the best of both worlds, digital, physical, it's all yours for the liking. So it's all here. There's tons of JRPG games here, guys. And the authors that are contributing, that are writing for this, very well spoken. They, they have a lot of information to tell you what the game is about, whether you wanna check it out or not. And oh my gosh, Hide Alive series. Such a misunderstood NES game, I'm telling you guys. I don't. I, I feel like I feel like you guys need to give it another chance. Just give it another chance. Why are we here, guys? For Falcom. If you watch my channel, you know the reason why I probably play as many RPGs as I do is because of the E series. I love the E series. It's my favorite JRPG, RPG, action RPG, every RPG, GRPG. Oh, it's all all the PGs. I love it. I love it. So what I want to do is I want to read an insert from the book, right from the author, so you guys can kind of get a little, little tiny glimpse of what is in store for you when you're reading the book. It'll be short, I promise. Ease Book 1 and 2. Falcom was known as one of the most prominent RPG developers in Japan throughout the 80s thanks to its Dragon Slayer line of games. But it was its Wise series, pronounced Ease series, that brought the greatest success and, for quite a long time, was its flagship series. The hero of the E series is a wandering redhead swordsman, Adel Kristen. He is a wandering adventurer who finds action, danger, and romance in every new journey and operates as a silent protagonist in nearly all of the games. And they got write-ups on every 
ease game in this book. It's so awesome. Oh my gosh. You know, and people ask me, what ease game should I start out with? And I always say, ease eight. Or ease origin. And that's a good introduction into the series of what's to come. A very unknown series. And speaking of unknown series, here's my friend, my first guest, Isha Gaming, to tell you all about it. Hi everyone, I'm Isha Gaming. You want to know about my favorite JRPG series or game in general? Oh boy, I have a lot. I'm such a JRPG fan, guys. I could, from the top of my head, mention the Rune Factory series, and I could also mention the Neptunia series. But if I'm gonna highlight one game in particular, or one series in particular, I would say the Atelier series. The JRPG series by Gust, which they have made 21 games for in the series that's called Italia. And I thought I would show off this book. It is containing the artworks of Arland, which is the Arland trilogy. These games are on the PlayStation, the PC, the Switch. PlayStation 3 was the original console that they came out on. There are so many Atelier games, so many, too many, oh my god. But currently my favorite Atelier game, which I would uh, the most recommend, is actually the newest one, which is Atelier Sophie 2. I made a review of this game on my channel, and it is a fantastic, phenomenal game. The cutest anime art style ever, but don't let the cuteness fool you. This game has depth has a ton of RPG elements in it. It has complex crafting systems, a ton of dungeons and side quests and the main quest and characters, lore, story, the world. <laughs> Such an addicting series. All of the Atelier games are so addicting. Now, especially from Rorona and Up, which is the modern Atelier series, I enjoy all of the games, found a lot of enjoyment and fun within this series. And if you ask me, and I get this question a lot, where is it best to start? I would say Risa 1 or 2 or Sophie 2. These are the three games that I recommend that you start with. They're all superb. Oh yeah. The Atelier series. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Irsha Gaming. Guys, I'm gonna leave a link to her channel down below. Go give her a sub. 3D.GameHeroes is awesome. So many awesome games in here. They even have strategy RPGs. And I'm gonna let my friend Chase After the Right Price tell you about his favorite. Hey guys, I'm Chase from Chase After the Right Price. My favorite RPG, JRPG game is Fire Emblem. And it's Fire Emblem for GameCube. And I thought I was gonna show it, but I'm pretty sure my brother is borrowing it right now. So I grabbed these, the Fire Emblem GBA games, which are a great time as well. But Fire Emblem GameCube. So it's kind of more of a tactical, like turn-based RPG. Such a good game. And my brother and I, Quinn, we got this game like when we were kids, before we had really dove into that world of games. And it kind of blew both of our minds. Definitely one of the harder games I played as a kid with, with the fact that if one of your teammates dies they're gone you don't get them back and that's kind of different from like pokemon and stuff that we, we were used to in that regard if they faint if they die they're gone but this game is so much fun i love how um you know you can use the people that are really good in the beginning of the game but if you do that they probably won't be very good at the end of the game so i remember like i think it's titania and then boyd and boyd was one that started super weak but if you used him and raised him up. He was really awesome later in the game, and I just happened to get lucky as a kid with him, but it turns out he is one of the best characters in the game. It's a blast. It's cool that we had that game before it was really worth anything, or sought after, or cared about. And now because it's really good, and because it had a kind of a low print run, it's quite expensive, and I love collecting games and, and that type of thing, so it's really cool when that lines up. The games that I loved as a kid are also like sought after today. So that is gonna be my favorite JRPG game, or will do. Thanks, Chase. Guys, go subscribe down below. I'll leave a link to his channel, Chase After the Right Price. Awesome channel, and look at oh, Dragon Quest. How can we not talk about Dragon Quest? Probably my second favorite RPG after Ease. Such a history here oh, to think that this is where we started. They have them all 
here, even up to the one that, oh, this is my daughter's favorite game. Look how far we've come. Holy smokes. It's amazing. <laughs> Let's move on to my next guest, Radical Reggie, to tell you all about Valkyrie Profile. All right, guys, I just gotta say that Bitmap has really outdone themselves with this book. This book is amazing. My game of choice in this book is a tough one, but I have many choices, but I gotta go with Valkyrie Profile. This game, to me, brought in a lot of uh, emotions, I would say, you know, a lot of feels. Um, this game is full of death, uh, full of a lot of sadness, but it's also full of brand new life, which is nice. Um, I can't say enough good things about this game. I really had a great time playing it. Um, it did kind of suck when um, you had to buy the strategy guide to find out how to get the, the best ending in the game. But looking past that, um, to this day, this game has a, I would say, has a profound effect on me. You know, it just, it showed me that storytelling in games can really be as good as like, just like reading a book or watching a good movie. You know, it was really well done how they put this game together. And uh, I wish that more people got to experience it. So definitely my choice for this list. Guys, don't forget to give my boy Radical Reggie a sub. I'm going to put that link right down in the description. Now let's talk about Final Fantasy, guys. I love this series. In fact, I own every game in this series. Here are two of my favorites. Let me know in the comment section down below what are some of your favorite Final Fantasy games. And Bitmap Books did a great job organizing all of these. But this is a good place to bring on my next guest, John Riggs. See what he has to say. If I had to talk about my favorite JRPG of all time, I would have to go back and feel how I felt the first time I played any JRPG I've ever played. And it hasn't been many of them, because believe it or not, I'm not the biggest fan of JRPGs. I'm not the biggest fan of, you know, I attack, then you attack, then I attack, then you attack. Uh, you know, um, but the first time I ever played Final Fantasy for the NES, it blew my mind. I loved it. Not just the music, but the fact that there's a storyline involved. I get to choose which characters I want to play as. So I'm not just forced to play as warrior or magician. I get to choose my own little crew, my my battle group and everything like that. Uh, to, you know, however, whatever best fits me and my gameplay style. Uh, the fact that I'm going to go around and then when I run into an enemy, that's fine. Then I just fight the enemies off one by one. The fact that I had different magic spells I could use and I buy the magic. I thought that was interesting too. Like, you don't you don't learn it. You buy it. <laughs> you buy the magic book or whatever. And the fact that, uh, I mean, just the enemies looked really cool. I thought the graphics looked amazing when it goes into that fight scene and everything. The, you know, the big monsters and everything. The big bosses and all that. The fact that there was, like, the <laughs> like the title screen, like, 15, 20 minutes into the game, like, after you cross the bridge. It's like, okay, now we're actually going to start the real game. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, I'm a big fan of that game. I've played the other iterations. Sometimes they call it Final Fantasy Origins. Uh, which is fine, you know, they had that version on, was it like PSP, maybe it was on the DS or something like that. Um, and then there's the new one that just came out for the uh, PlayStation, which I have, I haven't quite played all the way through it yet. Um, but I, I'm a big fan of just the old school, you talk about JRPGs, and how I felt the first time I played any of the JRPGs I've ever played. That feeling I felt the first time I ever played the very first Final Fantasy on the NES. I was like, this game's gonna take off. And then here we are, they just announced the 16th one, so, I mean, it must be doing something right right thanks john riggs for being on the show guys again i'll leave a link to his channel down below go give him a sub show him some love and now we are in the tale series oh my gosh you guys if you know me you know i love the tale series and they did a great write-up on all the tales games now i don't own all the tales games but i'm getting there i got a nice little humble collection I'm telling you every page of this book will bring back old memories And new memories. They even have new games like Exist Archive. I think I did a review on that. You wake up and boom, you're in a whole nother land. Or you come to, I don't know, you're tra transported. You play as Ellen DeGeneres. I'm just oh, kidding. yeah, I see it. <laughs> no, you play as this guy. Now, his name is Kanata. Ah, yes. And who can forget Chrono Trigger? This is a good time to bring on my friend Dan from Console Wars to tell you all about it. 
Dan from Console Wars here. My favorite JRPG easily has to be Chrono Trigger. I mean, there's just so many reasons I love this game. I don't even know where to start. I mean, the fighting, so many JRPGs at the time had random battles. This game completely just got rid of it. You could actually see your enemy on the battlefield. And then once battles started, you just fought right there. I remember that just blowing my mind. There was no other battle map. You just fought right there. That was just so cool. And the combat itself, was really awesome. You had, you know, your regular attacks and techniques, but then you can do combos with two characters, and then you could even do triple techniques with all three characters. And then there's the story. The story is just so easy to follow. Save the world, but with a nice time travel twist. And who doesn't love a good time travel mechanic? And then it was just so cool, because things you would do in the past would change things in the future. Even certain items, if you messed with them in the past, could be different in the future. And this game had high replayability. It was one of the first games I remember with New Game Plus. Sure, it's really fun to just go back and beat bosses now that you're all powerful, but it had a really good reason, because this game had multiple endings. Depending on when you beat the game, you would get a different ending. I just remember trying to get every single ending when I was a little kid. And then I remember one of the endings, the hardest ending I guess you could get. Uh, one developer uh, there mentioned Chrono Trigger 2, and I remember being so excited, like, yes, when's Chrono Trigger 2 coming? And Never is the answer. But I have a personal connection to this game because it got me in this. Nintendo Power issue 92 of January 1997. It got my name in the arena. If you look here, you got the Chrono Trigger scored 2,371 points on the speeder bike race log. And then there I am right there, Daniel Bueller, Somerset, New Jersey, my old stomping arounds. This was one of the highlights in my life, and I still brag about this to this day. And I didn't even talk about just like how amazing this game looks or the phenomenal soundtrack. There's just so many reasons I love this game. It is easily for me the best JRPG. Thanks, Dan. I'm going to leave a link to Console Wars down in the description below, guys. Go give them a sub. And how can I not talk about Fantasy Star? Oh my gosh, it's so good. Such a staple in my life. Oh my gosh. Oh, Lunar. Oh, you know what? This is a good time to bring on My Retro Life to tell us all about it. Hey, this is Tyler with My Retro Life. Thank you for having me on the show, Joel. My favorite role-playing game of all time has got to be Lunar, the Silver Star Story, complete. The PlayStation 1 version of the game is the one that I got when I was a kid. You are Alex, the born to be Dragon Master, destined to follow in the footsteps of the famous Dragon Master, Dine. And it's up to you to save the world from the evil Galleon who wants to harness the power that's found in your childhood friend, Luna. And he wants to harness her power to basically destroy the world. It's one of those classic anime style RPGs, turn-based Japanese RPG. And it was a, a just, I just fell in love with the world and the characters, the, the music was a, this incredible soundtrack with really beautifully animated cutscenes that just really grabbed you and brought you in to this world. I fell in love with the characters and I made my way through the entire game. It was the very first role-playing game that I beat. I beat it, I started it, and I went all the way through, and that was something that was kind of hard for me. I wasn't like a huge role-playing game fan, but this was one I wanted to see to the end. I, I finally mustered up the patience and stayed with it. My attention span was such that I loved action games and arcade-style games, and role-playing games were a little, a little, little difficult for me, but I got to the end of Lunar, and I will never forget that boss fight facing Galleon and um, really just trying so hard over and over again. He's a very difficult boss, one of the hardest bosses I ever faced in a video game. And I remember beating him finally and just seeing that ending cutscene where... Sorry Tyler, I love this series too much to have you go and spoil it. I know the game's old, but I just can't, I can't do it. I will let you finish what you said though. I remember seeing them and just, I, I literally shed a tear. I literally got teary-eyed seeing them in there. Um, and I remember, I remember just thinking, I, I, a game had never gotten me that emotional before. It was crazy. I was, I was like, man, I have to leave this world now. This, this world that I have come to love and adore, I now have to leave it 
and I can't I can't play it anymore. I got to move on to other games. And for that, for for touching me so hardly, <laughs> you know, getting me right here, I will never forget Lunar, the Silver Star story, complete. The PlayStation One version was the one. Thanks, Tyler. I'm going to leave a link to my retro life so you guys can subscribe to them. Guys, there's so many rare, unheard of, hidden gems, JRPGs in this. They even have Sweet Home. And if you don't know about Sweet Home, you better buy this book so you can read up on it because you need to know. They have some great games from my childhood, like Golvalius that no one talks about. Or RPGs that don't get enough love, like Shadow Hearts. have the newer series like Nino Kuni 1, Nino Kuni 2. I absolutely love those games. They have Eternal Sonata and they even have Xbox 360 exclusives like Blue Dragon. Blue Dragon? Ooh, this is a good place to bring on my boy, the CAG. I definitely have to say one of my favorite RPGs of our time, JRPGs, would be Blue Dragon on Xbox 360. It was exclusive to the Xbox 360 and it came out in 2006. It was also uh, developed and created by the creator of Final Fantasy. So he had his hands touched onto that game. Microsoft knew he was a great, you know, writer and producer of video games. So they brought him on to make this game for the Xbox 360. And it did very well. I mean, gameplay was awesome. Music was awesome. Combat was awesome. Story was awesome. I really did really enjoy that game. Um, it really gave me feelings of like Legend of Zelda, but in a turn-based style with the character models and everything. So it's definitely really one of my favorite games when it came to JRPG, JRPGs. And still to this day, I go back and play that game quite frequently. So I would definitely say check out Blue Dragon if you ever get the opportunity. It's pretty cheap right now. You can get it digitally or buy it on the 360 if you want to but Blue Dragon, highly recommend it. Thanks, Cagman, for being a part of the show. I'm gonna leave a link down below so you guys can subscribe to his YouTube channel. In fact, thank you to all the YouTubers that were a part of this episode. Links down below, go subscribe to all of them. Guys, this book is what you want. I think we've convinced you that this book is what you need in your life. Look, it even has this little bookmark and you know what you can do with that bookmark? Right there, yes, just put it at ease so you can always go back there and just so you know exactly where it is. And if you need to find any other game, they put this amazing little index here so you can find all these hidden gems that are in here like this one. Amazing. If you've watched my channel, you know I love this game. So guys, you gotta buy this book. It's pretty simple how to do it. Just go to your favorite web browser, you type in bitmapbooks.com and it'll take you to this secret website where you can buy not just this book, but all these beautiful books. You're like, what, there's more? Yes, there's tons more. But you're, first you wanna buy the JRPG one because that, that, that one is amazing. Look at this, look at this guys. Come on, and it's not that expensive guys. So thank you so much. That's my review, highly recommended book. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. He joined the watch, he could get his name out there. That would work for everybody. Truth be told, we could really use your help. We can't pay you in kill, but we'll work something out. For example, aha, what about your sword? I could mod it for you. No thanks, it's fine just the way it is. What, you some kind of purist? I know I'd never pass up a chance to improve my gear. Come on.